Well, welcome to Focus Today. It's always a delight to have uh, Patrick Doyle in the house, and uh, we always get a lot of response when he's here. And this is a way for you to talk to him and hop on the couch and not pay for it. <laughs> Uh, anyway, hey, if you want to join the conversation anywhere along the line, you are more than welcome to do that. The phone number is 776-5368. And if you're outside the immediate area, I'd love to hear from you as well. It's toll-free, 1-800-373-5368. Well, I think somewhere along the line, you may have a question or a comment. And by the way, if you want to remain anonymous, we'll respect that as well. Um, all right, confronting. Yes. You know, I had... Um, <laughs> I had Bill Gallagher in the studio a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the subject was dealing with the elephant in the room. Oh, same thing. Yeah. yeah. So confronting. Well, <clears throat> one of the, the other th confronting is one of the things I want to talk about. The other thing I want to talk about is why don't we? Yeah, why don't we confront? Uh, and you know, uh, as Christians, I think there's um, some nuances to why we don't confront, which are different than people who aren't in the church why they don't confront, um, but. The other thing I've seen is, is there's a lot of damage relationally that happens when people don't confront. Mm. So, so it looks like this. So someone in your life is doing something that, that harms you. They don't really know or they don't really care. Either way, it ends in the same thing. They keep doing it and you keep taking it and you keep taking it and you keep taking it. And it really irritates you and you're getting a little bit angry or maybe a lot angry. What happens to you if you keep taking that? Um, you want the the right answer, or you want to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want the real answer. I don't want no Sunday school answer. <laughs> well, you'll, you'll explode. Yeah, and or here's what I see a lot. So somebody's carrying all the stuff around. They're just kind of full, and then they're they're irritable. You know, they can be set off a lot quicker. They're impatient with their children. They're impatient with their spouse. You know, other people who have nothing to do with the situation end up paying. Mm -hmm. And so then you start to feel bad about yourself. And this whole negative cascade starts to happen. Mm -hmm. and, you can, and you can really become sick emotionally from holding all that in. Um, and listen, you're the one being harmed. Why, why, are, you, why are you holding it? Well, uh, you convince yourself that it's easier than confronting it. Exactly. So this is one of the, uh, this is what I hear a lot, Perry. This is one of my beliefs that people say, well, I'm confused. And I believe confusion doesn't mean I don't know what to do. I think confusion is more often I know what to do, but I don't want to do it. Can we change the subject? <laughs> <laughs> Can we just move on to something else? <laughs> well, you know, um, um, and so people people use that as a as a sidestep. Well, I'm confused, which is just another way of saying I'm not going to deal with it, because when somebody's harming you, you're not confused. I mean, when you're feeling that spike of anger, are you confused at that moment about who's right and who's wrong? No, but you're right. You're absolutely right. We withdraw or we avoid because we don't want to cause any conflict. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, uh, we're dealing with confronting today, and if you have any questions or comments on it, you're more than welcome to join us. And it's <laughs> call a, us up and confront us. <laughs> uh, maybe having a hard time dealing with confronting, and I think we all do. We struggle yeah, with this. Uh, the number is seven seven six five three six eight or toll free one eight hundred three seven three five three six eight. All right. Uh, well, it, it, in a, in a way, it's dealing with the elephant that's in the room. Yeah. And there, you can confront people at work. Mm -hmm. uh, friendships, yep. or probably the most tenseful one is the one within the family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So you've made up your mind <laughs> that you can't take it anymore. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I would assume there's got to be a cooling off period before you do some confronting. Yeah. I would never suggest you confront someone in the heat of a moment because uh, your uh, your emotions are high. You're more retaliatory than than honest. Um, I know that when I'm angry and I start to lose my temper, my goal isn't to be um, reconciliatory <laughs> or, or uh, healing. Goal is to win. Uh, my goal is to, you know, yeah, you know, win the conversation or get some res or get some uh, re revenge or flesh. My pound of flesh. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, I would definitely say if you're going to confront someone that you uh, don't do it in the heat of the moment. The other thing I would say is that uh, you need to get some feedback to 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 confirm what you're sensing. Because if you get feedback to confirm it, it makes your confrontation much easier because you, you have some confidence. Uh, how do you do that? So, for example, um, uh, 
I see it all the time with spouses. You know, someone in a rela- one of the spouses in a relationship, and the person that is harming them, it, it's kind of obvious. And the person goes to their spouse, and they 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 get honest and say, you know, this is happening, and this really bothers me when this person has been saying this or doing this, and I I, I want to make sure that I'm not just you know reading into that. And then the spouse goes, oh no, that's you're right, that's happening. I see that, and you you're right. Okay, and I, at that point. I see a lot of people go, yeah, it's happening. I'll just, I'll be nice. Mm. I'll, I'll uh, try harder. And I say that is the most unloving path you can take. All right. <clears throat> the most loving path you can take is to tell the truth in love. All right. You know, we hear that a lot. Yep. And we try to practice it. <laughs> um but there's also a part of those who are listening and watching today mm. that they may be confronted by somebody. Yeah. What's the attitude about being confronted? Because mm-hmm. the minute that it happens, all these defenses mm-hmm. go up. So, well, people can confront in a healthy way, mm-hmm. and they can confront in an unhealthy way. Yeah. Some people confront to gain control. Some people confront to win. Some people confront to avert you know, them being looked at. Um, but in terms of a biblical confrontation in love, the first thing is, is that I care about the person that I'm confronting. So if I'm in a reactive mode, mm. they're going to feel that. Right. If they think I'm trying to get them back or shut them up or shut them down, or, or yeah. you know, okay. that's not going to work. But if God's convicting me that, you know, what's happening is wrong, and here's the other thing, Perry, and this is where I think a lot of us get worried, is that when I confront somebody, I'm putting the relationship on the line. Yeah, you are. And you may not get the choice of whether or not their relationship continues. Yeah. And so what we do is we we keep taking it, which ends the relationship ultimately anyway. Mm. You don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who's harming you. And then you're like, oh, that person's there again. They're going to probably do that again. And I don't really want to be there. And so then you, 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 you lose those relationships anyway. And so in, in God's economy, what I see, we talk about it all the time. You know, there's no healing without the truth. Mm-hmm. Until the truth is spoken. Now listen, if, if, if I'm being hurt by someone and that's real to me, is that the truth? To you it is. Yes. So from that position, I have to move into that person with the confrontation. But what we often do is we say, oh, they didn't mean it. Oh, they meant this. Oh, this, I misunderstood that. What about this? And we do all this rationalizing and minimizing and justifying and spiritualizing mm-hmm. to avoid the fact that we're hurt. So now that I realize I'm hurt or I'm, uh, it bothers me, to go confront someone puts me in a position of vulnerability. Mm-hmm. And I don't know about you, but my family... Vulnerability was something you avoided, yep. you know, and so that's the other side of this period. Many of us have families where healthy confrontation never happened. We saw all kinds of other things go on where the family dealt with it, but they never really dealt with it. They just pushed it away or people drank around it or they isolated or they argued. Or, but real biblical confrontation and, re- and resolution, what, it, it's a rare model. It's, I mean, we're all sinners, so it, families have a lot of other ways of dealing with it. So what happens is, if things aren't dealt with, er- relationships erode. Mm-hmm. And so God, in His love, is He is God confrontational? Sure. Yeah. I mean, He's got that. Wow. He's got that thing called conviction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And turning over tables. Yeah, and and he's kind of (laughs) relentless about it. And the reason why is because of his love for us. He's loving, and so he's confronting. He's pointing out to me, hey, that's not okay. Hey, son, that was wrong. When you spoke to your wife that way, that wasn't right. You need to deal with that. Well, you deal with your kids. That wasn't right. So God has demonstrated in the entire scriptures his intervention and confrontation over, you look at the situation with David and the prophet Nathan. I mean, God intervened in David's world and confronted him about his sin. And what did it do? It produced healing. Mm-hmm. That, and so, but was it easy? Was there consequences? You know, there were, yeah. it wasn't easy and there were a lot of consequences. And if we're focused on not having any difficulty, we won't have any good relationships. 
Well, there was an old television show called Truth or Consequences. I remember that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so the truth uh, resulted in good things, and if not, the consequences were <laughs> <laughs> you got in the dump tank. <laughs> um, uh, this is very interesting because really what's happened here, when you reach the point where you have to confront, mm -hmm. um, you have been hurt. Yeah, exactly. But your response is anger. Yes. So you got to work through. You got to come back mm -hmm. to the hurt stage right. because if you go, if you stay in the anger stage, then your confrontation right. could be pretty bad. Right. Well, so just to reiterate, my belief about anger is anger is it gets to the surface, but below anger is hurt, mm -hmm. and below hurt is injustice. Okay. So when I'm angry, <clears throat> it's good information. Something's. I feel that something's I, wrong. Yeah. I, yeah. There's been an injustice done. Now, injustice can be real or perceived. Mm -hmm. But once I have it, <laughs> I got to deal with it, whether it's real or perceived, right? And so I've been thinking about this uh, uh, statement that came into my mind a while back, and I've been saying it a lot, and I believe it to be true, and it's this. If I could force repentance, <laughs> I could save the world. Yeah. Yeah, James 5. There it is. All right. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back. Uh, Patrick Doyle's in the house. We're talking about something that I think that we all sooner or later have to deal with, and that is the healthy way, the biblical way of confronting somebody that has hurt you. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions or comments, 776-5368, or if you're outside the immediate area, join us. And that is 1-800-373-5368. Hi, I'm Paulina and I work at the Deaf TV. Did you know that when you support the Deaf TV, you have a profound impact, not only in our community, but around the world? It's your continued support that takes the inspiration and hope in the programs we produce and makes them available to the thousands of people who are watching these videos online every week. Help bring encouragement and hope to our valley and beyond by making a secure online donation today at our website, thedove.us. We're back with Patrick Doyle, and uh, he heads up Veritas Counseling. And uh, all of these segments are available on the Dove website. You can download them later and watch them again and share them with your friends. And uh, you can also go to the Dove um, app and uh, download that on your smartphone or your tablet, and you can watch them again and again and again. That's been very helpful to me. I've, I've enjoyed very, that. Yeah. yeah uh, so um, check it out. And today we're dealing with the subject of uh, confronting, which is a, a big one. <laughs> Um, and there's so many scenarios in confronting, yeah. uh, confronting a child, confronting yep. um, a spouse, yeah. uh, confronting a fellow worker, maybe confronting your boss. Yeah, a big one, yeah, you know? or your and supervisor, whatever. Yeah, so maybe uh, some questions. By the way, if you want to re remain anonymous, you can do that. And the phone number to join the conversation is 776-5368 or uh, toll free, 1-800-373-5368. All right. Um, Sir, good morning. Yes. What's what's on your mind today? Well, I got a question for Patrick. Um, basically, uh, my question is: is are there limits in which you do or do not confront your spouse um, with hurts, especially if it exposes your own insecurity? Um, well, in a marital relationship, I would say that confrontation is um, I would say that conflict and conflict resolution are necessary for intimacy. And you exposing a weakness uh, will lead to greater intimacy rather than you hiding it and feeling um, less than or afraid or not good enough. Um, and I, I think it's really important that you, get, that you get to that place of confrontation. Now, what you may need to do is talk to somebody you trust, another man, and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking about, this is what I'm feeling, and get some feedback. A lot of times for me, what I do is I have a guy that I meet with on a regular basis, and I'll give him the raw, unedited version, and which would probably you know, make my wife a little nervous. <laughs> and then um, we talk about it, and he helps me get a grip on it, and then I go to her and say, here's what's going on. Here's how sure. I'm feeling. Sure. Um, and so, and, and uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, that, that's good. Um, and, and what if the, the situation in the marriage has been where each party has been hurt to the degree where 
we're both seeing counselors, uh-huh. but you know, and and there, there's obviously a lot of background there, but sure. uh, and each individ- each situation would be a little different, but right. um, you know, it kind of comes to a point where if if each individual is trying to to understand mm-hmm. and fix their own issues, yeah. that um, maybe it is or it is not a good idea to uh, confront. At the time, maybe sure. it's better to maybe it's better to to give that to God at the time rather than your spouse, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I do know what you mean, but I think that what you're really talking about there is a timing thing. If the issue is bugging you that much, or it's that much of an issue, it's got to come to the light. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, for healing to happen. And if you're both seeing counselors, I think that might be a great subject of conversation with your counselor to say, I really feel like I need to get this on the table. Can you help me with the timing of it or the, the, the how-to of it? But you holding on to it and it, bu- and it sort of rolling around in you is going to lead to difficulty in terms of the communication in the relationship. Sure. Um, and so, but I think that's really a timing thing. And are there a, is there a right time to confront and a wrong time to confront? Absolutely. And I believe that's like a, a spiritually discerned thing. I don't think there's a roadmap per se that you can go to a book and say, you know, on this subject you confront now. It's mostly about you obeying the Holy Spirit. And I've never had the Holy Spirit convict me to confront somebody and me feel easy about it. <laughs> so, so, so do you think maybe uh, confronting it Maybe God is trying to teach me to confront it with Him at this time, rather than open up that that pain, if you will, that right. that's probably exaggerated at this time. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the other thing: you you can you can pay a little now, or a lot later. Okay, I've, so, I have two questions: uh, Are you and your wife seeing the same counselor? No. Are your two counselors talking to one another? I wish they were. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they should, don't you, Patrick? You can give them permission to do so. Um, yeah, uh, there's obviously a lot more background than yeah. we have time yeah, for. Sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, that would be my wish. Um, yeah. But, you know, I've, it kind of gets to the point where, I think you've stated this before, where if you can't control things, it kind of gets to the point where you have to let God... Yeah. <laughs> you got to let God do the work instead of you trying to do the work. Yeah. I don't think any of us have any control, by the way. I think that's a no, myth. I, so, yeah. But here's the deal. So I always, in these situations, I always believe the best route is to follow your convictions, not your mind. Because your mind is working to rationalize, minimize, justify, spiritualize, trying to minimize the damage. But if you can listen to your spirit, you can listen to the Holy Spirit, and if He says, hey, move forward with this, then you in faith and courage in Him, you move forward. Um, and, that's a, and that's a tough thing to do, to listen to the Spirit when your flesh is so <laughs> raw. Exactly, which is why that's such a good practice. Because in an intimate relationship, that's always going to be the case. My wife has more ability to hurt me than anybody else aside from my children. And, you know, and so that's why it's important for me to stay uh, you know, connected spiritually so that I can hear that. And I'm telling you, my mind is my greatest enemy in that. Because yeah, I, it is. I get all these stuff spinning in my head, which is why it's really important that I have people that I trust that I can go to and say, hey, here's what's happening with me. Give me some feedback. Because I'm, I, the person I can lie to the quickest is myself. And, so it, it, and the other thing is I would say also, you've, you've, you've alluded to it, but it, it, this stuff is a process. I want the event because <laughs> I want it to be done. Sure, yeah. Oh, but, boy. But it takes time, and I say you got to get your patience and you got to get your endurance from a spiritual place. Otherwise, you'll get impatient and just start pushing. Okay. So maybe, so maybe if it's you know you 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 talk about boundary, yeah. and maybe at this time it's over. You know, it's it's stepping into a boundary that's that's maybe, been somewhat established. Okay. If there's a boundary established, yes, you don't go there, but. But because I don't know all the details and I can tell there's a big backstory, I, I, I would get some feedback on that. Just in, like I said earlier, if you get confirmation that it's time to go and could do the confrontation, then you go. If you don't get sure. confirmation, then you just wait. Okay. And I think, I think your counselor is a big tool here. Yeah. I, I hope so. I, w- I would role play with your t- counselor. Yeah. 
Oh, okay, very good. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank right. you. Well, that epitomizes everything. You know, difficult. Uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. Uh, there's yeah. no easy solution. And so it. sometimes what happens, and I think it's 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 part of that circumstance. If I confront this thing. Then it opens up that thing and that thing and that thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to deal with this thing. Well, you can't. And particularly if you're talking about an, an intimate relationship, and particularly within families. Um, you know, I know a lot of families, and, you know, one of, the, one of the reasons why I decided to do this subject today was I was having a conversation with someone um, last night, and they were talking about, they, they called it being on a confrontation spree. <laughs> <laughs> But they were confronting several people within their family about the damaging behavior that those family members had done toward them. Mm. And they were discussing how much better they felt mm. as a result of having confronted. Did it solve any of the issues? No. In mm -hmm. fact, what it did is it got some of them on the table for the first time. Right. But the person felt so much better because they were no longer holding it in. It's part of what God says. If you bring into the light, it starts to get better. And so one of the things I really want to address today is that, look, if you're living in fear and you're holding on to stuff and you're avoiding people and you're, you're, you're isolated and or you uh, have all this angst about certain people, God doesn't want you to live that way. And look, you can confront those people and what may happen is that relationship may end. Problem solved. But see, in the church, we don't think that's legal. <laughs> Yeah, but I can tell you, it's it's yeah. it's a requirement. Well, and I think uh, you know, outside of marriage, I think there's seasons exactly because uh, God brings people in. Yep. God takes take people mm -hmm. out. Sometimes and, and I've uh, seen I've seen a lot of marriage difficulty, Perry, mm -hmm. the result of years of non-confrontational stuff. Yeah. And in my, I've said this example many times before, and I get it gets repeated <laughs> back to me, so it's I know it's working. Yeah. <clears throat> the husband and wife at Elmer's. Exactly. <laughs> the, the husband and wife at Elmer's that are 70, 80 years old and they've been married 40, 50 years, and they don't even like each other. Yeah. And the, you, like I've said before, you don't get to Elmer's. You, you didn't start at the altar going, you know, here's to hating you later. You know, <laughs> at the altar, at the altar, yeah. you're excited. Yeah. How do you get from excited to hating the person? Well, it's my belief that you get there by not dealing with the inevitable conflict that arises when two sinners get married. <laughs> well, no, you're the counselor, and, and I've had them through the years in my mm -hmm. office. Now, and when you get them and I get them, they're angry. Or hurt, it, well, or defeated, or hopeless. <laughs> yeah, but you got to bring them down to the hurt and define the hurt. Yes. And I think that I want you to get into that because if we okay. don't define what we are offended yes. with, right. yeah, we're angry about it. Right. But we got to come back. Why are you hurt? Mm. What is it about your own psychic that this action or this continuous action is right. hurting you? Right. And then from there you can move forward. And I'll, I'll be very specific about how to do that in terms of a confrontation. All right. Seven seven six five three six eight. If you want to join the conversation or toll free at one eight hundred three seven three five. Five three six eight. Patrick Doyle's in the house, and if you want to remain anonymous, you can do that. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dan and I work at the Dove TV. You know, compared to Portland, Seattle, and LA, Medford might be considered a small market, but at the Dove, we're excited about the opportunity to make a big impact right here in our community. And you help make that happen. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us now by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us, or by phoning 541-776-5368. Hi, we're back with Patrick Doyle and uh, a subject that we all deal with, and that is uh, the right way to confront a person who has, I, I guess it boils down to hurting you, yeah. one way or the other. Uh, your immediate response may be anger, could be tears, yeah. Um, but it, it, there is a scar in your heart, your your emotions, your psychic that this person has done or continues to do. Uh, it may be an action. It may be uh, it, it may be as innocent as the day is long. I mean, right. you know, the, uh, often I have figured out when you finally uh, have the guts <laughs> <laughs> to confront somebody, they had no idea what they were doing. Sometimes, yeah, you know, and mm -hmm. so therefore you manufactured this thing in your mind to be a whole lot bigger mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, they accepted it and they mm -hmm. you know said okay I'll change and mm -hmm. you move on others know exactly what they're doing and they're using it as a means of control and yep. power and yep. intimidation uh, and you and I end up getting the people in our offices who have been hurt and mm -hmm. been damaged by it mm -hmm. and I've seen um, 
I've seen adult children damaged by the intimidation of a parent later on in life. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the 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 ways that people can be harmed, you know, or go on endlessly. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing that I think is important, you talk about the hurt, and when I when I when I talk about confronting someone, you know, I often talk about confession. Mm -hmm. And the confession, in my estimation, has to be specific, okay? General confession, I don't believe, is healthy confession. Mm -hmm. I believe that God is convictor of specifics. Mm -hmm. He doesn't convict in general. Mm -hmm. So when someone's confessing to me in general, it makes me suspicious that they're not being quite honest or they don't know all the facts yet. So maybe they need to do some more soul searching. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of confession, I mean confrontation, the, the, one of the things that you have to do is you have to be very specific when you confront. And I would encourage you when you confront to not only be specific, but be very behaviorally concrete. So for example, you know, when you said you're dirty, rotten scoundrel yesterday when we were having a conversation, when you said that, that was really hurtful to me. Okay, so your confrontation is specific. It's not, well, you, you bother me. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you're mean. Well, what, what, you know. So in your confrontation, confrontation is often a tool that God uses to bring conviction, mm -hmm. which is why it needs to be specific. So when you say, hey, when you did that to me, and you say the specifics, God, through His Holy Spirit, convicts the offender. Oh, wow, I didn't even realize, okay, yeah, you're right. Now, if you confront somebody and they blow you off, yeah, what should you do? Well, I was just going to go there because <laughs> sometimes uh, <clears throat> pride is such that they'll say, no, I didn't, or you right. didn't understand it. Yeah. Well, you really are a right. jerk. Right. And or, at that point, you, if you're not careful, mm -hmm. you come unglued. That's right. So the, the other thing that's real popular is the I'm sorry, but. Yeah. Which is really a blame shift. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm sorry, but you, but if you hadn't, but they. So uh, one of the key things we're looking for when we confront is for someone to take responsibility. Right. So if you confront someone and they don't take responsibility, what that tells you is they're not safe. Mm. And do you want to have a relationship with someone who's willing to harm you and not take responsibility? Mm -hmm. Well, what if this is my spouse? Yeah. Yeah, what do you do? So you, what you do is you keep confronting and you pray fervently for God to convict them. If God doesn't convict them, you're going to have a limited relationship. Unless you like taking, you know, hurt, which I don't suggest because that'll shorten the lifespan of any relationship. Mm. Um, I suggest that you, you put up some boundaries. And as you do, what happens, that person realizes that the relationship is changing. And maybe the pain of the distance will bring about conviction. But here's the thing. We don't control it. We can't control God's right. conviction. But, boy, you said something really powerful there. By doing the confronting, you have, uh, you've brought the issue to the light mm -hmm. and uh, the relationship at that moment now has been redefined. Yes. Now, whether the other person that you're confronting accepts it or not. Exactly. But the relationship is between the two of you has been mm -hmm. publicly defined. Yes. Redefined. Yeah. And so what they do with that confrontation yeah. leads me to my next move. If they repent, then I move toward them. Okay. If they don't repent, I put up a boundary and say, that person's unsafe. They, they won't even admit what they're doing. Okay. All right. Let's go to the phones. Though. That's powerful stuff. Hi, ma'am. You're on air with Patrick Doyle. Hi, yes. Um, I have a situation. I have two family members, and um, one uh, has an addiction, and I stepped in um, at, at their request finally to help them, uh, but it turned out really badly. And I got physically hurt at one point, and, um, and I finally decided it took me a couple months to extricate myself from that because um, I had agreed to, to do something for them. Um, but uh, I wrote a letter and said, you know what, I need to not you for a while. I just, I can't be there. And um, so it's been several months now, and I'm recovering emotionally from that. And um, but then I've got the third family member telling me I need to step back in and reconcile that relationship. Well, I love this other person, but I'm feeling I'm just so not ready to do that, that I'm feeling um, a, pr a pressure to step in and, and do something right. to get that relationship back again. But then I'm seeing that the other person is um, from uh, reports of a third party. Um, still 
uh, in denial and uh, of their addiction and yeah. um, still, you know, Happening. dealing with that. So I don't know what to do. <laughs> so first of all, <clears throat> never get involved because of other people's pressure. Oh, okay. S secondly, you you entered into the fray <clears throat> with good intentions to help, and they yes. summarily beat you about the head and neck, <laughs> right? Yes, that's what happened. So they don't care. And listen, I'm an expert with addicts. As long as they're in denial, you're just walking into a lion's den. They will eat your lunch and blame you for it. So <clears throat> then at that point, what we have to do is hold a strong boundary against that person having the ability to harm me. If indeed it comes to a place where they have conviction, God enters in and says, this is wrong, then that person will come to you and say, what I did to you was wrong. At that point, you can start looking at reconciliation. Until then, you keep that lion caged, and we pray fervently for God to heal them. But okay. we can't control that. And you don't need to spend your life blood on something that is going nowhere. And not yeah. only that, but you're feeling extra pressure by a third party. I think that is and just unreal. What I would you do know. is go to the third party and say, I understand your concern. However, I think it's inappropriate, particularly since I've already confronted this, to do it again in light of the fact that I was hurt the first time. I know. I mean, I see the third party stance. This is a parent who loves us both. Of course. And, um, and they're desperate. To have a happy family again, yeah. you know. But what they need to look at, what they need to have is the truth, which is that, hey, you're not going to have a happy family as long as this addict is on, on, on the road doing their thing. And I wish I could, like I said before, I wish I could force repentance. If I could, everybody's family would be happy. But <laughs> <laughs> I can't, and neither can you. Yeah, it's good stuff. And so it's, I really, I really um, uh, give you kudos for, for moving in and taking the risk and going there. But you obviously realize that the person has no desire to change. Yeah, and I think by your actions, you've already you've already defined the relationship now, which probably uh, wasn't clearly defined before. Now, you've told that person that you confronted there's an issue, and um, you let it lay. Right, and here's the other thing: the distance and the consequence of their behavior mm. is a necessary part of God getting to them in terms of conviction. Yeah. If we keep throwing a mattress under them right before they hit, that's not going to work. I've never seen anybody who's an addict change because it was comfortable. Addicts, uh. ch addicts change because the pain of the way they're living exceeds the fear of changing. There you go. Well said. Well, thank you very much. Thank I wish you. it wasn't that way, but there it is. Well, that goes back to something you, <coughs> you've said a lot, and I have... Um, Repeated? I, I have plagiarized. <laughs> <laughs> well, only two things it's, make you change, inspiration yeah. or desperation. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's the only two things that's that make right. you change. Either God inspires you to do it, mm -hmm. or you're so desperate of the situation, you start changing. Otherwise, right. uh, <coughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, I wish that I could just go buy some change at the store, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Now, uh, <coughs> I think that caller sets up a classic, uh, what do you do now? Right. You had... A confrontation it didn't go well yeah uh, you back off and yeah. there is this there's this pressure to fix <coughs> the results yeah. of the confrontation yeah and the real reason for the confrontation gets shoved <coughs> under the rug yeah well and I think this is an issue that's kind of specific to the church mm. we feel some responsibility to make it better well did Jesus did Jesus Living under the Roman oppression, did he ever encourage anybody to take up guns and, and start a coup? Mm -hmm. No. Did he, he, he? No. He said, look, my kingdom is not of this world. I'm going to do what the Father says. What you need really isn't my goal. My goal is to obey the Father. Whatever he's saying, that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. All these needs don't matter to me. <clears throat> Which is why I think it's really important that we operate from a place of conviction, not need. You and I both, Perry, know from being in ministry that if we, if we based our ministry on the needs, we would go insane. Yeah. Because there's no way we can meet the needs. Yeah. I can meet with people 24 hours a day and never yeah. get to the bottom of it. Right. Jesus didn't operate out of need. He said, I only do what the Father says. It's out of obedience. 
So our, one of our main goals in terms of confrontation is, am I obeying God and what he's saying, or am I trying to be a do-gooder? Or mm -hmm. am I trying to fix something that's none of my business? Or am I trying to force an outcome that I, that I want? Because if you do it from those perspectives, it's not going to work out. All right. Uh, so <coughs> it's possible, uh, if the last caller is still listening, it's possible that God did use you mightily. Absolutely. And now That's right. back off and let the piece of yeah, the fruits of righteousness <coughs> work, you know? You know, you know and I worked in <coughs> residential treatment for years, and I talked to hundreds of addicts. And um, I, I was never a popular person in the beginning of treatment. <laughs> <laughs> I was the guy that was saying, you're an addict. And they're like, no, I'm not. And I'm like, <clears throat> got this raft of information on them. Well, why did you have a point? you know, one, two blood alcohol level, you know, and uh. why did all your family members drag you in here uh. if you don't have a problem? Well, uh, they don't understand. So, <clears throat> but this is one of the reasons why I think confrontation is so good. Look, at the end of that 30 or 45 days, not all the time, many times people just left and said, you know, to fool you with you. Yeah. But many times at the end of that treatment, they would look at me in the eye and they would say, I really want to thank you for loving me enough to tell me the truth because I think it saved my life. Well, well truth always does exactly. save Exactly, and so that's got to be our motive. All right, 776-5368 or, or 1-800-373-5368. Patrick Doyle, we're dealing with uh, the right way to confront people. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Paula and I work at the Dove TV. Every day we get letters and emails from people who've been encouraged, blessed, and challenged by the programs on the Dove TV. But we couldn't do it without you. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us continue to bring inspiration and hope to our community by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us, or call us at 541-776-5368. All right, we are healthily in, in a healthy way <laughs> confronting one another. And uh, well, you know, this is a big thing because um, I don't think there isn't a day don't buy we don't run into some kind of confrontation, mm -hmm. you know. And it's amazing to me how um, critical yeah. Christians are. Can be, yeah. You know, uh, we're not turning the other cheek. We want to win the argument. And I'm reading more and more articles why uh, the younger generation mm -hmm. are not coming to the church because yep. um, they're not interested in being handed a latte and being cool. <laughs> <laughs> they are interested in uh, authentic uh, Christianity. And um, mm -hmm. Jesus loved and forgave, but he was firm. Yeah. You know, so there's a balance in all of this. Right. And um, and confrontations are tough. They're they just are. tough. I mean, I don't like them. Right. You know, but I, I, I agree with you. You feel better. If they're handled in a mature, calm, and yeah. controlled way, yeah. it's the healthiest thing you can do. Right. But most of us don't do that. By the time we confront, we're pretty angry. Yeah. We, yeah. So we let it build, and then yeah. we lash out, i.e. confront. Yeah. And then uh, you've worsened the situation. Yeah, exactly. So if you've been offended, hurt, mad. If you're angry over something, mm -hmm. which below anger, and I'm going to talk to you about he does now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, below anger is, is hurt and below hurt is an injustice. You need yeah. to qualify all of that yeah. and then come back mm -hmm. in a healthy way and look at the confrontation. All right, let's take a couple of calls here. Hi, Elizabeth. Thanks for <coughs> waiting. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I appreciate all your discussions. I always look forward to Patrick coming and discussing things like this because uh, I always have issues to work out. <laughs> so it's Join the club. But, yeah. but the issue that oh, you're, you're discussing a human today... Being. Hey, Patrick, this is the first human being that's ever called the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I grew up in a home with uh, six children, and I was the scapegoat. And um, I moved away 400 miles, which helped a lot. And uh, I still deal with an older sister who um, is in total denial about mm. everything. And and so then later I ran into two of her her acquaintances mm -hmm. who told me horrendous stories. And so I've never mentioned this to her. Um, but is it ever appropriate to say, okay, you say that you never did any of this. Right. Um, what about so-and-so? Yeah. 
I think is it ever <clears throat> appropriate? Yeah, I think it is um, because it could bring some freedom to her because she's holding on to that and that's hurting her. But um, I would encourage you to do that in writing. Write it down, take some drafts, run over it a couple times, edit it, and then send it off to her and say, you know, I'm writing you this because I'm concerned about, you know, what this means to you. I'm, I want you to have some freedom. Um, so can you uh, consider this and maybe write me back? And she might write you back, she might not. But you taking the opportunity to put it out there may bring an opportunity for God to reveal it, confront her, convict her, whatever. Now, does he need you to do that? No. But I think what you need is to clear your conscience a little bit by saying something. Well, the reason I've never done this is I know my sister pretty well. And I imagine you I'm do. afraid that she's going to go to these two individuals with my letter in her hand and say, what about this? You betrayed me or, you know, whatever. Why, why are you afraid? I'm afraid... Um, Wouldn't that be good? Are you afraid that you may have betrayed confidences on the other side? Well, uh, yes. Okay, so did they tell you that information in confidence? One did, one didn't. So one so one of her neighbors said... Your sister is the meanest person I've ever met. So, you know, that's, that's so pretty... Uh, people like your sister, though, control from fear. They use fear to control people and to keep anybody from confronting them. So the only way to deal with that and, and give them an opportunity is to, is to, you know, face the fear. What's the worst thing she's going to do? Give somebody a tongue lashing? She got weapons? What's her deal? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so okay. I mean, let's, let, let's, let's put some faith in God's power to deal with this, and let's let a little fur fly. <sighs> okay, I'll keep you in tune. <laughs> okay, but listen. <laughs> I'm going to blame it on well, you. Well, <laughs> there's a reason you're 400 miles away. Yeah, but, remember, <laughs> you, but remember, let the activating ingredient be God's conviction, yeah. not the need. No, I, I, my heart goes out to my sister. She, she ended up joining a church. We were both raised the same. She ended up joining a church that doesn't believe in sin. <laughs> how do you, how do you do that? <laughs> you know, how do you find a church that does that? Well, yeah, there's, there's a lot out there. Yeah, there are. Well, I would say, Elizabeth, look, um, maybe you can use those two people who wrote you as references without identifying them. But take it upon first person instead of third and say, yeah. look, this confirms what has been in my heart for a long time. Yeah. And as your sister who loves you, I'm concerned about this, and then write the letter and wait for a response. Yeah. But don't that put the would be, that would be, I, I need to copy that down. Well, watch it again on the repeat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate this discussion. Okay, thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, hey, Frank. Who are you confronting today? <laughs> hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> uh, it's not so much a confrontation, but you know, I uh, there's a guy that I, I really know and, and love, and he's in the church uh, down in California where I used to go. And you know, I I don't. It's not a, it's not that I want to confront him, but I don't know if and when it's appropriate to uh, tell, talk to someone and tell them that you know they're living an unexamined life. In other words. He got a divorce about four or six months ago, and now he's seeing somebody already. Mm -hmm. And it's the pattern for him. He was married three times, and I just see that he might be on a destructive course. Right. And I don't know how to tell him that uh, without offending him because he's very prideful. He's very <laughs> angry. I'm afraid I'll take my head off. Right. And, and yet, I can't put it down. I keep thinking, oh, don't do it. It's not my business. I shouldn't get involved. But yet the Lord keeps putting on my heart that I need to say something. And I just don't know if it's appropriate to do it and how to do it. Okay, so, but Frank, you're, you're, um, you're afraid. Yeah. Where does that come from? It comes from the fact that uh, he, he has said in conversation during the years that he's threatened physical violence on people mm -hmm. that don't, the one he doesn't like what they're saying. Mm-hmm. And that I don't want to get into an altercation with sure. him physically. Sure. So, are you sure? Are you absolutely, completely sure this is God telling you to get involved? That's what I'm wondering. 
I'm trying to prayerfully examine what my motivation for doing it is. Well, until you have conviction, I say you don't do anything. Right. Um, That's and listen. The conclusion I, I reached. The, listen, the other thing is, is that God doesn't need your help. <laughs> All right, that's true. <laughs> okay, thank he you. He doesn't need mine either. Huh? Aren't you glad you called? <laughs> okay, okay. So th <laughs> that's why I want you to make sure it's conviction. Because listen, what I said before is I want to reiterate. Look, it's we don't do these things out of need. You've described that the need is there, right? Yeah. But it, it's not your job. If God convicts you, then do it. But that comes with a sense of compassion and love. Not in, I'm going to end this sin. What about right, man, that's where it's coming from, because I do love and care about him, and I just feel the need that I need to share something with him, but I just don't know how. So I would, I again would suggest you do it in writing. Yeah. Hmm. What okay. about a biblical confrontation? I mean, what about a Matthew thing? You take uh, somebody else with you. I mean, why, hmm. do this, why do this alone? That's true. Does he know yeah. anybody else? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but you said he's in a church, right? Yeah, in fact, he's, He's, uh, he's he was in leadership in our church, but he's not anymore. Well, get somebody from the church. And yeah, you know. Yeah, that's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and so you know, Frank, if since you're not there, you definitely got to get involved with some of the people there because if he does repent or anything happens, he needs people around him to help him get through it. Right, and so he won't punch me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always a bonus. Yeah, that's a, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks. You yeah. bet. <laughs> I've been punched out before. Oh, I've been close. I've know. been taken to the ground a couple of times. Really? Had yeah. some death threats. I've had some close ones, but I, you know, I, I realize when when tempers flare to that level, yeah, the the discussion's over. Yeah, you got to figure out yeah. a way to peacefully end it and bring yeah. it back later. Exactly. But uh, it could be some of these confrontations we're trying to handle one on one when right. really we ought to maybe mm -hmm. circle the wagons. Yeah. Well, know? I mean, uh, that's kind of like a mini uh, confrontation. Sure, I've been involved in lots of situations where. You know, there's church leaders that are in trouble, mm -hmm. and everybody's afraid. Yeah. And you know, you know, whatever. So I've been involved in a lot of situations where we get a group of men together, right? Or, or people, sometimes ladies too, and, and circle the wagons. Circle or, the wagons. We, we when we go in there and say, yeah. "Here's the deal." Yeah. But um, that requires a lot of courage. Yeah. And if your faith is in the outcome being what you want, oh, you're in trouble. You are in trouble. Listen, yeah. here's the deal. I confront people every single day for the most part. Yeah, you do. And the thing that I've learned is the outcome has to be in God's court. Mm -hmm. My job is to speak the truth in love. It's God's job to bring about the outcome. If I'm speaking the truth in love to try to get a certain outcome, I'm manipulating. So I want to be clean about that and say, here's what I see. Here's how I perceive it. And give them the truth. But if I'm trying to you know, corral them into something, they're going to sniff that out in no time, and then they're going to point their finger at me, and they're going to undo any of the truth I say to them. Mm. So I say, mm. you have to have some strong, you have to know very deeply that God indeed loves you, and that He is present. And from that strength, you move into the confrontation, not in a reactive frame, where that person's a jerk and somebody needs to deal with them. And yeah. Uh, all right, so if you were to wrap this up in 60 seconds on a tip, what would you say about you, you're hurt and yeah. you're feeling more and more right. compelled to talk to the okay. person that's hurting you? Get feedback and confirmation. Mm -hmm. Pray for God to give you the right timing and a heart that's loving, and then be willing to let the relationship go if necessary. Well, there's a biggie. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Patrick you Doyle, Veritas Counseling, and people can call your office at 622-6018. Okay. Or they can go to veritascounseling.com. Veritascounseling.com. And you can watch this again on uh, the Dove website a little bit yes. later on and uh, send it to your friends. All right, we'll see you <laughs> Confront next time. Confront them that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> It's a thought, yeah. <laughs> hey, watch the show. I'm thinking about you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jim, and I work at the Dub TV. Every weekday between 6 and 8 a.m., our award-winning news and sports team bring you the best morning show around. It's live, it's honest, and it's a whole lot of fun. And you help make it happen. 
Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us continue to air local programs that share your voice by making a secure online donation at our website, thedub.us.